students, faculty, and associates, welcome to this presentation, Composing for the New Era, the Social Brain and Small World Networks in the Metaverse, sponsored by Virtual World's Best Practices in Education. In today's presentation, we will present models for connection and interaction online for those participating in, facilitating, and forming social communication networks. Participants will be able to reach extended audiences with shared areas of interest and practice. This presentation will be given in ARCs, Data, Demonstrations, Putting It All Together, Pro Tips, and Audience Debrief. Next slide. Problem Statement. How do I reach everyone else in the world? The world population is approaching 8 billion. How do I reach them? I could try calling, but only 5 billion of them have mobile phones so far. Okay, maybe that's a stretch. Let's redefine the problem. How do I reach everyone else in the world who shares my areas of interest and practice? Whom I don't even know. How do I find allies for my work? How do we find allies for our work? Next slide. Six degrees of separation is the idea that all people are six or fewer social connections away from each other. The concept was originally set out in the 1929 short story Chains by Hungarian author Frigus Karinthi. It was popularized in the 1990 play Six Degrees of Separation by American playwright John Gurr. Empirical studies have been conducted to confirm this connectedness experimentally. In 1969, an experiment using postcards sent by the U.S. mail confirmed an average connection distance of six. In 2010, a study using Twitter confirmed an average connection distance of five, as did a subsequent 2016 study using Facebook. The, ran the number six can also be predicted using random graph network models using appropriate parameters for populations and individual connections. Next slide. Seven plus or minus two is an example of a cognitive memory limit. If we are asked to remember a list of seven of ten items or more, most of us cannot do it unless the information is presented in chunks. A chunk is the largest meaningful unit in a list that a person can easily recognize. For example, if I said, remember this, one zero zero one zero one zero zero one zero zero one most people could not do it if instead I said remember this one thousand and one zero one hundred and one thousand and one most people would be able to do it because I have grouped it into three chunks what counts as a chunk depends on the knowledge of the person being tested. 
for non-English speakers who see the string F-O-X-J-U-M-P-S-D-O-G, it makes no sense, whereas most English speakers will automatically group it into three chunks, fox, jumps, dog. For non-Chinese speakers who see the string Hu Li Chao Go, it makes no sense, whereas most Chinese speakers will automatically group it into three chunks, fox, jumps, dog. Next slide. Dunbar's number, 150, is an example of a social relationship limit. It states that the maximum number of meaningful relationships an average human being can sustain is 150. Dunbar theorized that this limit was a direct function of human neocortex size. According to the theory, the tightest circle has just five people, loved ones. That's followed by successive layers of 15 good friends, 50 friends, 150 meaningful contacts, 500 acquaintances, and 1,500 people you can recognize. People migrate in and out of these layers, but the idea is that the space has to be carved out for any new entrance. Next slide. The social brain hypothesis states that primate brains reflect the demands of complex social systems. Primates, including humans, engage in tactical deception and coalition formation behaviors. These behaviors require the capacity to predict the behaviors of others. This capacity is called theory of mind, done in the prefrontal cortex, which is used to project and ascribe mental states to others in order to analyze and infer their likely actions in response to ours. We use theory of mind most heavily with our close relationships such as family and best friends. We use it substantially with our medium relationships, such as professional colleagues and long-time associates. We use it least with our distant relationships. In essence, we are running mental simulations in our brains, one for each relationship that we maintain. Act. Close relationships require detailed and resource-intensive simulations. For example, will he or she like this gift? Medium and distant relationships take less resources unless we move them closer due to changes in our circumstances or our work. For unknown relationships between our 1500 cognitive limit, we use stereotypes until and unless we move those unknowns closer. Next slide. Small world networks link strangers through short chains of acquaintances. Small world networks embody order and disorder and are found in many real world phenomena, including social networks. Small world networks have long range random shortcuts 
that connect members through common acquaintances. This slide shows an example network with 12 members and how they connect to each other. Some of the members, such as Rajat and Francis, only know two other people. Some of the members, such as Emily and Larry, know six or more other people. All of the members are connected by shortcuts to all of the others. For example, Ryan can connect to Arnold in three steps by going through Doug and Rebecca. There is an issue, however. The issue is that there is a big difference between knowing that any two people in a network can be connected by a short path and finding that path in practice. This completes ARC 1 data. ARC 3, putting it all together. Recall our problem statement. How do I reach everyone else in the world? How do I reach others? with shared areas of interest in practice whom I don't even know. The slide shows a chart with a blue horizontal arrow representing increasing connections and a red vertical arrow representing increased connectivity. The diagonally rising red arrow shows connectivity increasing as a result of the factors reviewed so far, such as six degrees of separation and small world networks, and now a new factor called the metaverse. Next slide. Connected members have degrees of separation. The slide shows a diagram of me connected to you by one step. The light blue line shows that it would take us 16 steps to reach Amy, who represents a person that neither you nor I know, who would be a good ally. If only we could reach Amy. Next slide. Connected members have small world networks, which reduce degrees of separation. This slide shows that you are actually part of a small world network consisting of members 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Furthermore, member 6 knows somebody named 7 who is part of another small world network consisting of members 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Furthermore, member 12 knows somebody named 13, who is part of a third small network to which Amy belongs. The light blue line shows us that now, using shortcuts, it would take us only six steps to reach Amy. Hooray! Next slide. Connected members have exotic connections which reach unfamiliar networks. The slide shows that member six also knows somebody named Alpha, who is part of another small world network to which someone named Emile, Emily, belongs. Emily would be an excellent ally as well. The light blue lines show that it would take us only five steps to reach Emily. Hooray!
But how did this happen? It happened because when we took the time to talk to Member 6 about our work, they told us about some of their other connections that might be distantly related, but still useful. Member 6 became an exotic connection who linked us to Alpha. Next slide. Connected members have persistent signals which propagate via chaotic systems to reach potential allies. Chaotic systems include weather, economics, brains, and social networks. The behavior of a chaotic system cannot be predicted in detail, yet there are general trends and recurring patterns that we can observe and with which we can work. A social signal, such as a conference presentation or an online post, will dissipate almost immediately upon entering our physical and online social networks. Our signals must be repeated consistently and persistently and endure multiple bounces to reach others whom we do not know. When a version of our message does reach them, it will be subject to misunderstanding and dismissal. Do we not do the same with the obscure messages that reach us? And yet, if variations of the same signal keep popping up in their conversations and news feeds, variations that are just possibly relevant to their interests, the message may catch enough of their attention to just take a look, perhaps to even respond and ask for more information. That is the first barrier overcome, getting their attention. Does this not happen with some of the obscure messages that reach us? Next slide. The metaverse is a chaotic system which boosts connectivity. As a shared reality, the metaverse exists in the wires, radio waves, devices, and apps with which we connect and create. As a concept, the metaverse exists in our beliefs, desires, intentions, emotions, and thoughts. The metaverse exists conceptually, physically, and digitally. The metaverse connects us, but its definitions vary. Become conversant with the multiple definitions of the metaverse now in play. Next slide. ARC 4 Pro Tips So, how do we reach everyone else in the world and how do we reach others with shared areas of interest and practice whom we don't even know? The short answer is to continue working through our associates and networks and to continue to augment our physical proximity networking with our digital proximity networking. But now our perspectives have shifted. Six degrees of separation has shifted from being a charming concept in fiction to an empirical fact in practice. We know it can be done. If it's not happening, it's because of us. Seven plus or minus two and Dunbar's number 150 have shifted from being cognitive limits we have to cope with to powerful mechanisms 
with which we can work creatively once we understand and allow for them. Small world networks have shifted from being familiar who we know associations to powerful mechanisms with which we can work creatively to reach who we don't know once we understand them. If it's not happening, it's because of us. Pro tips. One, be a persistent signal. What messages are you putting out and are they clear? Record yourself. Watch your recordings. Fine tune your messages. Is what you are saying clear? Get feedback. Recordings and relatives are excellent sources of feedback. 2. Be aware of multiple signals to multiple audiences and tune them. Distinguish between messages for known networks and messages for potential allies who don't have the full background. State the gist. Spell the acronyms. Confirm which messages go to which audiences. Reach beyond your familiar networks. Start by interviewing your familiar connections. Seek to discover their exoticness. Whom do they know that you don't know? And in the process, discover your own exoticness. Immediated conversation opens access to outlandish new networks, connections, allies. 4. Recognize your cognitive bias and the cognitive bias of others. Cognitive bias is another cognitive limit, which, understood, becomes another powerful mechanism with which we can work creatively. Cognitive bias directs our thinking what to remember, what to pay attention to, what to assume, and what to learn or not learn. 5. Become hybrid tech fluent. Learn how to combine technologies to optimize their strengths and balance their weaknesses. These technologies include physical, digital, and conceptual tools. Shift your perspective of familiar tech, seeking to discover its other exotic uses. For example, in this presentation, images were prepared using photos of whiteboard diagrams transmitted by email. For example, in this presentation, the theory of chaotic systems was combined with the theory of small world networks. And finally, Become literate in multiple virtual environments, especially with the era of the metaverse now upon us. Use the metaverse definition of your choice. However, honor the metaverse definitions of others. That alien, exotic thinker who annoys you may just be another major potential ally once you understand them. So this completes today's presentation. Thank you. Over and out.